Hello friends, this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. Let's get started. This is a, it's called an edged glued pine and it's just a thicker round and I found this at our local Menards and I would believe that you could find these in other hardware stores. And now I'm just looking at some colors to paint this because I'm going to make a lemon and I want to make the rind and so I'm going to do a combination of colors and mix those together because I couldn't quite get the right color. And so I mixed up a couple of them and I made sure I had enough. And that maize color in Waverly was getting really dry anyway. And so I used a bunch of it and I just wanted to make sure I didn't run out. And then I just painted along the edge. And as I was doing this, I was thinking maybe I needed a little rind. But uh, for now, I'm just painting the edge and then I'm going to get out my white Waverly and put some of that on. But before I did that, I wanted to save that in case I needed it again. So just cover it up with a little saran wrap. And here's my white chalk paint. And I believe I ended up doing a couple of coats, let it dry in between. And here's where I'm looking and I think, I think we need a little more of a rind edge. Just kind of like this cute napkin that I'm going to use. And I was debating whether to use the napkin. I did use the, uh, I did end up cutting it down. And then once I cut off those edges, um, I went ahead and put the rind on. And I just eyeballed it. And then I used that other color that I um, mixed the maize with and I dotted it on there. It's a Arteza sunflower color. And I thought that will give it a little bit of uh, texture. It kind of look more like a rind. It's so fun that lemons are in. They're fun to create and so pretty. I love the yellow. So when I did my comparison, I saw that this was going to be too big. So I cut that down and then you can use Mod Podge. I had Liquitex, so I'm going to apply this down and do a Mod Podge technique or decoupage technique. And I put that down and one of the techniques that I've learned from subscribers is you put a little bit of that saran wrap over it and that'll help it so you don't have it rip. Now, the very the problem that I had with this, I couldn't figure out why it was so wrinkly and stuff. I forgot to deply the napkin. So make sure you're down to one layer. Otherwise, I was going, what in the world is going on here? I just can't get this smooth. And then I discovered that I had two plies. In my haste, I completely forgot to take that off. So if you do something, make sure you remember to deply your napkin and it'll work so much better. But I fussed with it and I got it pretty much to work, but it would have worked a whole lot better if I had just remembered that step. So here we go, it's dry now and I'm going to make this into like a Lazy Susan. I bought this also at Menards and I'm just gonna attach it to the bottom and uh, this was meant for like a cupboard, but that's all they had. And so I'm gonna make it work. And I wanted to put some pilot holes in just to uh, help with the drilling in. And so I borrowed my husband, Ed, I borrowed his tools and we, I put some uh, pilot holes in there. And that just means you're just using a smaller, just a little drill bit to make little holes. And then just take that same tool and put in your screws, make sure that they're not going to go through the other side. They're shorter. And then this is what I came up with the solution for the bottom of this is just I cut a piece of uh, the MDF board, weighted that down, and that became the base. And here I'm just checking it out. I think it turned out pretty good despite the fact that I had forgotten to you know deep ply that 
I gave it to my daughter and she was going to put some resin over the top to make sure it's nice and smooth. And I like how it turned out. That's such a unique napkin and I want to thank Valerie for sending that to me. She's one of my subscribers. How fun is that for the middle of your kitchen table? Well, let's keep going. DIY number two. This is a wheelbarrow that I found at Target and they were $5 and I'm just showing you now that I made a hole in there with the drill because I was thinking I'd use it outdoors and I went outside and I primed it and let everything dry and it, you can't really see the primer but it is there and I'm using the Dixie Bell drop cloth color. I absolutely love this color. It's just very... Um, you know, it's not white, it's not cream, it's just pretty. And now I am trying to get into these little crevices on the inside of the wheelbarrow. This is what gives it strength. And I'm going at this point, well, this is going to be one of those far from good, but good from afar projects. But I ended up just taking a small brush and I just did my best and going around and finding all the little spots that you can add paint to. Now this is the fun part I had. I wanted to make it look like enamel. And so you just take some black and just somewhat randomly put that on like it's been chipped away. And I love this look. It's just amazing how it kind of comes to life once you do that. And now I needed to do something with the handles, so I just got out some twine and uh, wrapped it around. And I did put some Aline's glue over it to kind of keep it down. You could use hot glue if you wanted. That's what I had handy at the time. I knew once I got it wrapped, it would, it would go. So I wrapped both handles, and then at the ends there was just some of that hanging out. You can see there's a little bit of the plastic handle out and so we got to go by and paint that of course and a couple of coats for that and now I wanted to put a little sign on it this is a Dollar Tree just a little galvanized metal thing and I'm going to use this as my little sign it's a three by three and I'm going to use that as a template that little dog picture I cut some black cardstock and I place that inside and then I cut a piece of white cardstock and I'm going to put that on the outside and my goal with this was to do that enamel kind of look again and it gives it somewhat of a, an edge. So I'm just putting a little double sided tape so it doesn't wrinkle and just popping that on there. And it was quite shiny, so I thought I need to dull this down. And so I'm using white and gray and black, and I'm just randomly pouncing that on with one of those makeup sponges that you can get from Dollar Tree. Those come in handy, you can just use them, and if you don't wanna wash them out, you can just toss them. And I've also been known to cut those down so I can use them a couple times. And there it is, let it dry, and now I need to get something to hang it. So we went uh, again with the twine. And just going to hang that on the underside of the wheelbarrow. Like I said, I've got that hole in there. I could use this outdoors because like, I didn't want you know, anything to settle in there. But I decided for this project, I'm going to use it on the inside. And so I was looking around the house and I found a bouquet that I had already, it's already done. And so I've got a, a container in there. I'm just gonna put some of that sheet moss in there to kind of cover the container. And it turned out so cute. What do you think of this? I had so much fun making this. I hope you enjoyed this part. And that little table, is another video of mine and I used one of those rounds again and that's a popcorn tin.
Well, let's keep going, folks. I have this summer far farmhouse I want to um, introduce. This is a collaboration with Sandra, and her channel is called DIY at the Chauvin's Nest. I love Sandra's style of crafting. She loves farmhouse style like I do, and she's thorough in her crafting. She has so many great decor ideas. Please check, please check out this talented lady, and I will list her channel in my description box. Let's keep going. DIY number three. I have some of these little berry, uh, yeah, berry boxes. Um, and so I wanted to do something with strawberries because that's totally farmhouse and uh, summer. And so I happen to have this retired Stampin' Up! paper. Sorry you can't get it, but there are lots of uh, papers and stuff out there with strawberries that you could use. I just trimmed everything down and then I'm going to put it on the front of this little berry box. Just using a lot of uh, glue, the just if you use plenty and just hold it into place, the Elmer's glue stick will work just fine. And just kind of place it how you want to. And then when I wanted to uh, pop up some of them. I use these uh, dimensionals. You can call them their pop-ups, anything like that, and that'll kind of give it a little raised uh, part. And you can see how it sets it apart from that other strawberry. Before I pressed it down, I wanted to put that little leaf right behind it. And then just hold it into place again. And last but not least, we had to add a few little pops, uh, dimensionals to those flowers. Now that little blue, I was like, hmm, I like that blue. What am I gonna do with that color blue? So you'll see what I ended up doing. And just making sure I don't layer the pop dots up because then it'd be really bulky. Just kind of make sure things are sitting just perfectly. Fun. All right, now we've got some gingham, buffalo check, whatever you'd like to call this. Um, I will list the name of the company that I got this cute paper. It came with different colors of sheets and one side was small and the other was larger. And I really wanted this to stick, so I went around the outside with the double-sided tape, and then I put some of the glue on there and held it into place. And I did that to all four sides. Actually, three sides. <laughs> this is the Waverly Ocean, and this is where I'm taking that pretty little blue, and I'm going to add a detail to this. And I debated whether to do it or not, but I thought this would be so cute. You guys tell me what you think. Should I left it alone? Or do you like the little blue um, accent on there? The little uh, inside with the uh, stuffing or whatever, the little nesting, that is actually just a Dollar Tree hula scoop skirt. And I've kind of cut it down and fit it in there and put those faux strawberries on there. Love it. Let's keep moving DIY number four. This is an old, just a little jar I had. Actually, someone gave it to me. And I loved how it was kind of curved at the bottom. And so I'm going to clean this up with uh, rubbing alcohol to make sure you get all the oils and dirt from it. Let that dry. And back to my drop cloth color, apply one coat of that and let that dry completely. And see how I'm painting, I can find all those cute little things I'm going to be able to pull out later when I do my um, putting on my wax. Now, I followed this other lady that she says to put a, a coat of clear enamel on it, so I did that. And then I put another layer of paint. I didn't show that, but that's what I did. And now this is a cute little stamp that I have on my Etsy store. And... I am kind of fussing with it because I'm really not sure how I want to do this. You know, it's kind of it's kind of flat, but it's kind of rounded. And so I'm going to get the stays on ink out and put a good amount on there. And I thought, oh, that's going to fall too. So I just ended up touching it, holding it down. 
and holding it in place and I still didn't quite get the front of the beak of the um, chicken and the little pig. So I had to go over it again, but I think I lined it up pretty good. Now to finish this cute little jar. This is some Dixie Belle wax. You can use whatever wax you think if you like this kind of style. And I really am new to this, so I just kind of went with putting some on and I knew I was gonna buff it off. So um, I didn't let it dry completely. I just thought I wanted to move it around and just playing around with it. It's something I gotta learn how to use a little better. And uh, so the color of that jar actually changed because I ended up kind of rubbing it all in and buffing it in. I'm loving it so far and we need a little twine to cover up that ring. And I wanted to put a lid on it. And so I have these little rounds and you can see that I have a pool of, it's dried glue. So it kind of is gonna go on the inside of the uh, jar. And I'm gonna do one of my favorite techniques. You're gonna put the paper on top of this. Of course, it's got all that glue on there. Press that down into place really good. And then you take an emery board and you can just see how I'm kind of going around and edging it. And that'll cut that off perfectly. It'll line up just great. It's the easiest way to do something when you've got a wood piece like this. And then I did go with some more of that pretty paper and put a nice little border around that round. And once I got that on there, I thought I was done and I didn't show the next pieces, but I'll um, show you in the next clip that I ended up putting some buff Buffalo Check black ribbon around it and then I put a little topper, it was just a bead on the top of it. It just needed a little more color and a way to balance things. There it is. I love how it turned out, it's cute. You can see where it might have been a little boring if I hadn't put that ribbon on there and also the little uh, bead for the top. On top of the bead is just a little embellishment. I like to do stamping and I get things like that and it, it's fun when you use, have all that stuff you can coordinate together and craft. Well, let's do the last one. I'm hoping you're enjoying this video so far. I have a piece of wood and it is the MDF and I'm using my good old um, drop cloth color again. And then this is vintage duck egg and I'm just gonna drag in a little bit of that color, not tons, but just a little bit, let that dry. And then I'm going to do a little sanding and this is kind of meant to smooth it out also and just kind of take away a little bit of the paint you know to make it rough looking and before I did anything I took um, a paper towel and wiped it down and now I'm marking it the board was nine inches so I'm going to do three inches and another three inches and we're going to make it like a faux like three pieces of wood together and just using a sharpie to make those seams. And now this, if you haven't seen this, this is like a um, Dixie Belle. Uh, it's a silk screen stencil. And I'm using their caviar color. And I'm just going to ru run my squeegee on it, on it, over it, and just pick up the color in that old truck and it says rusty on the bottom and just be real careful so you don't get it off of the uh, stencil. And once I had that kind of cleaned up, I went back with my vintage duck egg 
and put more color on it. And for ease, I flipped it around so I could do more of the pulling. These new stencils, they're fabric or, um, you know, silk, silk screen. They're really fun to use. And so I've got somewhat of a sticky back and I just pulled that back. And it says it's rusty. So I got to make this rusty. But before I went and did that, I wanted to add in over those colors. I wanted to put in my, my wood and put the lines in there. So you've got your three pieces of wood. So there's a technique using cinnamon and I'm just picking out some of the little spots that I think maybe a truck would rust. And I'm using a little bit of that, you could use the Mod Podge, glue, this Liquitex, whatever that, even the paint would kind of get it to stick. But it was all dry and I wanted it on parts that didn't have paint. So I put those in there and then I um, let that almost completely dry and I brushed it away with just a dry paintbrush. And I even, you know, really went over it to make sure it didn't have like any bulkiness or it was too much. It just needed to have just a little bit. And that made it a rusty truck. What do you think? I love how it turned out. And I didn't go with the typical red. I went with this pretty blue because I love it. My friend Patty just loves this vintage duck egg blue. I want to thank you all for watching my video. And if you like my crafting style, uh, please subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe to Sandra's channel either. And I want to let you know, we've got, I've got a new video coming out July 1st at 5 o'clock, Christmas in July, guys. So if you click the like button, it'll help my channel grow. And I want to thank you, all my current subscribers, and welcome to any new ones. Have a great week, my friends. Bye-bye.